As you remain standing, take your Bible out. We're going to jump into the Word and let God just speak to us this morning. Uh, if you missed last Sunday morning, you need to go back and watch it on Facebook because you, you're only going to get part two today. I'm in the book of Matthew chapter five. How many has got your Bibles? Whether it's electronic or the book, the pages, would you shout amen? How many's turning with me? How many's going to stay awake? All right, that, that, that one is strong, Derek. Come on now. Let, let's, uh, let's get it strong. I have thoroughly enjoyed this study, this uh, ministry on the Lord. And I, I want to say it is an honor to have everyone with us and all the family. Our guest this morning uh, had a... a, a Cindy, we just want to welcome you this morning, a precious, precious lady that, that uh, it looked like on our webpage that uh, we had a second service at 1230. I'm a, I'm a, maybe we call that prophetic in the name of Jesus. And, uh, but um, anyway, Sid, I, I found this out at the church last week just outside. And uh, Cindy, we welcome you to this house this morning. And uh, she said we'd be back today, and she was back today. And uh, Amanda, so good to have your family with us as well from Ohio. Glory to God. Welcome, guys. And uh, all of you, uh, thank you, Jesus. And all of you online, if this is your first time. Now, I want to encourage you to do something watching online. Make some comments. I want to know you're there. Put some likes. Put some, uh, don't put no mean faces, okay? I don't, 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 don't want to see any mean faces. Uh, 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 if you got something to say mean, come call me. No, don't call me. No, don't do that either. And, uh, but uh, uh, make some comments, whether you're on webpage, and share it. And uh, let's let a lot of people get this word. Matthew chapter 5. I want to begin in verse number 5. The only scripture just for the moment that I want to share with you today. Blessed or happy are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. How many meek people in the house? Uh, they're, they're. Okay, the meek means humble. Anybody humble? Are you kind of scared to raise your hand because if you say I'm humble, then you just lost it? You know, I don't know. God help us all to be meek. Father, I'm going to pray over your house in these next few minutes that I can uh, share the word that you've put in my heart for this day. Lord, you are so good. You are so awesome. God, come in, forgive me in my life, weakness, sins. And Lord, just restore all of us to where you want us to be, to that place of humility and meekness, getting rid of pride and those, that type of lifestyle that would uh, keep us from inheriting what, God, you have prepared for us. And God, most of all, thank you for your grace and your mercy because without that, we have no hope. But I thank you for loving us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated this morning. Y'all look great. I hope you feel good. I don't see you online, but y'all look great as well. God blesses, chapter 5, verse 5, another translation says, God blesses those who are humble, for they will inherit the whole earth. Just to bring us back together, last week we looked at, I, I've got three questions that I asked. I got to one of them. The first one was, what is meekness? And so just very uh, quickly and definitively just to say, number one, meekness is not weakness. It's strength under control. Too many think that if you're meek, you're humble, you're a pushover. Let me tell you, far from it. Because there's something inside of you. The word has no connotation of meekness. Secondly, meekness is the opposite of pride. Basically, on the opposite spectrum of meekness, pride will take you away from God's best for your life and will ultimately take you out of the presence of God. The Bible says in Proverbs 16, 18, that pride comes before destruction and an arrogant spirit before a fall. Pride always, hear this, pride always elevates your estimation of your own importance. You ought to turn to somebody and say, you ain't all that. <laughs> I know we don't want to hear that, but it's true. We're, uh, God says through his word not to think more highly than we ought to think. Pride will cause you to do good things just to get recognition. Help us now. But God says, blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Thirdly, meekness is defined by our actions. And this, we got to this last week, and, it, and I believe it hit all of us and caused us to really, uh, you'll put this into focus definitively in our life. Meekness is being gentle, not judgmental. Meekness is being tender without surrender. Meekness is being teachable, not unreachable. 
And meekness is acting and not reacting. And so here we are this morning. That's good stuff, isn't it? This morning, I want to look at two questions. First one is, second one is this. We, we, we define what meekness is. Secondly, what produces meekness? How many know how to be meek? Well, you know, we got to think through that one in a moment. See, because meekness... Being humble, let me tell you, it's not a born, natural born quality. I mean, you, you think about it, even from the little uh, children to start with, they don't, they don't care about what anybody else thinks. They're going to cry out, come on, take care of me. And which that is what we love to do. We want to do that. But that builds even more. How many of you have seen the terrible twos? And the threes and the fours and the fives and the terrible twelves. And you may keep going, but it's not terrible. I mean, it's, it's, we rear them and we grow them. And, but meekness is not a natural and the terrible adults. See, if you don't get a hold on, on that, that issue of pride, it will come back and bite you. And destroy your life. It's not a personality trait. So, so what produces meekness in our lives? Because we're not born with meekness. So let me ask another question first. How can an apple tree produce an orange? Stupid question, basically. But, but the reality is, a tree can only produce fruit, what? After its kind. Apple tree produces apples. Orange tree produces oranges. Grapevine produces, so you got the understanding. Same way with us. Understand that a tree can only produce after its kind, so meekness, it is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Understand, you cannot produce meekness without being in connection with the Holy Spirit. Galatians 5, and following says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness. There it is, self-control. The law was not against such things. Verse 24, those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. And if we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. If you want to become meek, you got to keep in step with the Holy Spirit. He says, let us not become conceited, provoking one another and envying one another. So, how do you become meek? Guys, you asked the question. First thing is this. Let me bring you back in, contextually speaking, to where God has put this on my heart. Being blessed is what I believe God gave me this year for this church, for all of us individually and for our families. We're blessed. But quickly, when we think we're blessed, we're thinking about what I got. When we're blessed, we're thinking about what I've been given. But I, I, what I felt is that being blessed is not what we have, but whose we are. Our blessing is not about my car. It's not about health even. Our blessing is not that, yes, those are qualities and there's, those are characteristics of being blessed. But blessing, if you had not your heavenly father, you would have none of that to begin with. Blessings from him. Everything you got, everything that's been given, everything that's going to be, it's all about God. So my life is about him. And so that's where we find ourselves. So how do I become meek? Leads me to the first statement. Let the spirit of God break you and make you meek. You want to become a meek person, God's got to break that pride. How many's found out God knows how to break your pride? If you could produce meekness by your own effort, you would be proud of yourself, wouldn't you? And out goes your meekness. Meekness is not produced by self-effort, but by Holy Spirit effort. Because only the Holy Spirit can produce meekness in the heart of a yielded Christian. It doesn't happen any other way. Because it is God and God only who produces a humbled spirit in our lives. Because when God, it is God who gets inside of us and transforms us and changes us to be something that otherwise we could not be. Basically, you could call it a revolution. How many can find yourself different now than you were before you got saved? See, that's what it's all about. 
It's a new birth. It's from the inside out. You remember when Jesus said, come to me all you that labor and are heavy laden and I will uh, give you rest? He said, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. And here's how he described himself. For I am gentle and humble, which is the word meek. One translation says meek in heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So say this phrase with me. Happy are the meek. Happiness is not being in charge. Happiness is being under the leadership of the Holy Spirit of God. Happy are the meek. Happy are those who are controlled by the Spirit. And it's a fruit of the Spirit. Happy people are those totally submitted to God. And if you're trying to work it out on your own strength, let me tell you, you're going to be the most miserable person on the face of this earth. I guarantee it. Scripture guarantees that. It's kind of like, how many, how many knows a lot about horses? I don't lift my hand, only just, just as a point to lift my hand. I do not know nothing about riding horses. Never put a saddle on a horse, never put a bridle in a horse's mouth. So I'm telling you what I don't know and what I read about, okay? Just wanted to be uh, straightforward with that. But as compared to a bit in a horse's mouth, horses are, of course, very large and they're very strong animals, but just a little piece of metal can control all of that strength and the direction. I want you to think about a wild horse. It's what a person is like without meekness. They have no direction. They can't accomplish anything on their own. And a horse with a bridle can be taken in the right direction and accomplish things. That's what the Spirit of God wants to put in us, the bridle of the Word of God, and into His voice in our life to lead us where He wants us to go. But a prideful person says, no, I got this. But you'll never go in the right direction or accomplish anything for God without meekness. And the Holy Spirit puts a bit in our mouths that guides us. So we're strong people, but meekness is strength under control. Meekness comes from being totally submitted to the Holy Spirit. So it means the Holy Spirit's got to break us. He's got to break that sin in our life. He's got to break those attitudes. He's got to break those tendencies. As the word says, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. My thoughts aren't always right. Most of the time they're not. God's thoughts are always right. And so God wants to break those things in our life. Secondly, if you're listening, writing this down, meekness not only comes through letting the Spirit of God control us, but meekness is an ongoing spiritual development. It's called discipleship. If you've not found this out, I hope you understand this this morning. Salvation is just the first step in our walk with God. In order for the mind of God to be in us, we've got to put that, those thoughts into our lives. It comes from this book right here. If you're not reading this book, you're dying. Okay, I'm glad somebody's tracking with me this morning. I said, if you're not getting this book inside of you, you're dying. You're dying a slow death because this is your life. This is your breath. This is your hope. This is what gets you through your day. It's the word of God. Not what you think about the word, but what God says. And this book right here, it establishes patterns and and details in your life that'll grow you from strength to strength, from, from faith to faith. You'll be further today than you were yesterday because this book leads you. It's the word of God. Meekness is a process. James 1.21 says, Therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with, with meekness the implanted word. There it is. Receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. It is the only way to have your soul changed. This book, receive the word with meekness. How many of us, re- we read the word to, to get what we want and what it can do for us instead of what it can produce in us? God wants to to produce meekness and strength and glory inside of your life. And if we're meek, truly meek, it's only because something very wonderful has happened. A sovereign operation of the Holy Spirit. So, how do we get meek? Let the Spirit break us. Secondly, make a decision to grow in the Lord. Become a disciple of Christ. This is just teaching, folks. That needs to get in our spirit. Thirdly, third question is this. What does meekness produce? Say it with me. What does meekness produce? Why do I want to be meek? Why why do I want, because the the world's understanding is that meekness, uh, people will walk all over us. No, 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 no. It's strength under control. Meekness will change your understanding of the world system. What does meekness produce? Say it with me, Matthew 5, 5. Blessed are the meek. Say it with me. Blessed are the meek. Why? 
Say that again. They shall what? Okay, now say it like you mean it. They shall inherit. How many's got an inheritance that you don't know about? How many would love to get a letter one day, a call one day, say, you didn't know this person, but they left you $2 billion. Wouldn't, would that make your day? Jesus, let it be. Come on. That, <laughs> but let me tell you, there's something far greater than $2 billion. You can have all the money in the world, and if you have, don't have Jesus, you're the poorest person on the face of this earth. The Bible says, blessed, happy, happy. Makarios, blessed means happy are the meek. So what does it produce? The meek shall inherit the earth. How about that for an accomplishment? God says, I'll inherit the earth. Well, what does all that mean? See, you get the whole world thrown in. You serve Jesus Christ, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things. We're worried about how we're going to get through the next day. God says, don't worry about how you're going to get that day. Just seek me first and I'll take care of next day and the next day and the next day and the next day. I'll take care of you for an eternity. I've got you right now in your present. I took care of you in the past. I've got you in the present and I've got your, I've got your number for the future. So why are you worried about it? If you'll just seek me, don't worry about the day. But in everything about prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, that is a missing component. Come on. Don't worry. God says be anxious for one of two things. Nothing. What have you been worried about this past week that you need to lay at the feet of Jesus right now? Don't be anxious for anything, for anything, for anything. Don't worry about anything. Don't worry about anything. Your body, your sickness, your health, your, 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 your finances, your, your, your job, or your schooling situation, or your family situation. Don't worry about anything. Worry will just send you to your bed, and you'll be depressed. But he said, in everything, by prayer and supplication with is there anybody in the house that could just throw your hands in the air and just thank God for all that he has done for you? If he never answered anything else, you can still thank him for what he's done. See, with thanksgiving, God says this, to inherit the kingdom is to inherit all that belongs to Jesus. We understand inheritance is a future tense. It means reward. Great, Matthew five twelve says, great is your reward in heaven. Romans 5.18 says, I consider that our present suffering is not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. How many understand it'll all be worth it all when Jesus is revealed? The trials will seem so small when we behold him. But back to that phrase, inherit the earth. Inherit, now I, I'm going to ask you to have some biblical imagination this morning. How many's got that? Historically, what it means to the Jewish people, it meant the promised land. It meant that even when they were driven out, they would come back. The promised land was their inheritance. And that phrase, inherit the earth, is in the New Testament many times. And as a matter of fact, the phrase, the meek shall inherit the earth, you find it in the Old Testament as well. One in particular is Psalms 37, 11 says, but the meek will inherit the land and enjoy great peace. God says, I'll inherit the land. I would, I, get that in your spirit. I'll inherit the land. Futuristically speaking, it means heaven. Yes, the meek shall inherit the earth. There is a new heaven and a new earth coming, and that's probably what it means futuristically speaking. But there is a, I believe, a deep spiritual analogy in this passage, a deeper spiritual meaning that we need to comprehend some way this morning. Say with me, blessed are the meek. Meek will inherit the earth. Happy are the meek. So meekness means to have your strength, what? Controlled by the Spirit, and that's the only way you can ever have it under control is for the Spirit to control you. You want to be controlled, you got to let the Spirit control you. you have, you've probably tried to control it yourself before, and we didn't do a great job of that. We never do when we try to control our situation. And so it's to have it controlled by the Holy Spirit. So the people who live a life controlled by the Holy Spirit will inherit the earth. Now what does that mean? I'm just trying to get through day by day. 
Pastor, I don't understand. I, I, I try to be meek, but I, I, you know, it's just not working out too good because everything I try to do, I'm losing this and I don't have that and this is being hit here and I'm dealing with this here. And So what does all this mean, inherit the earth? Well, the word inherit and the word earth is a little different than you might think in the Greek. The word inherit means to possess or to own. Everybody with me now? But it also means to have dominion over. Not only do you own it, not only do you possess it, but you have control over it. You have dominion over it. Are you with me? Stay with me now. The word earth in the Greek simply means dirt. Everybody say dirt. So happy are the meek, for they shall inherit dirt. That sound exciting? Great promise, isn't it? I get dirt. Well, hang on. Let me tell you a little more about this Greek word. It's not the Greek word for world to inherit the world. The Bible says it's the earth. It's the soil. And if you want to go to the root of the word, it simply means dust. So, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit dust. See, okay, Pastor, I'm not really tracking with you on this. Hang on, you're about to shout. Inherit means to have dominion over. You with me? So, I have dominion over my little track of ground here. My, this, he said, I'll inherit the ground and more than that. But hang on, think about it this way. Blessed and happy are the people who are controlled by the Spirit. So what were we created from? Say it with me. What were we created from? Dirt, dust. We're just dirt. Is that right? So say it another way. Flesh. My flesh. Paul talks about warring against the flesh, that the flesh wars against the spirit and the spirit wars against the flesh. And we're told that we need to fight against the flesh, the dirt, the ground, us. We're told that we need to war against the fleshly appetite and the lust of the flesh. So maybe in our biblical imagination, we could think about it this way. Blessed and happy are the people who are controlled by the Holy Spirit so they will have dominion over their flesh. Take that, devil. God says, you trust me, and you walk in meekness and humility, I'll give you control over your appetites. I'll give you control over your flesh because you're controlled by the Spirit. And if you're controlled by the Spirit, then there is an inheritance, an ability, a, a privilege that God says that flesh is not going to destroy you any longer. Did y'all get that? Do I need to explain that again? Anybody? God will give you an inheritance over the dirt, over you. Now, I know there's more meaning than that. I get that, I understand. But that's the spiritual meaning of this verse. When we submit to the Holy Spirit, that what, that's what gives us the power to control the appetites, the lust of the flesh. And don't tell me you don't have them because that flesh man, flesh woman, it is still in you. It'll wake you up in the morning and make you think and take, tend you and lead you to other places than that God wants you to be. But if you'll trust the Lord and lean not onto your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him, he will direct your path. He will direct. And if he directs, wrecks my path that means he's in control and I'm not and God says you got the dirt I can't take off and put on this flesh it's me it's got me but I can choose to take off and push away the Holy Spirit. But if I will choose to bring in the Holy Spirit and clothe myself with the Holy Spirit and become meek and get rid of my pride and that walks, my pride leads me and does and tries to guide me. But God said, if I'll stop trusting myself, he will direct my path and then I will know which way to go. Mm, that'll preach right there, ladies and gentlemen. Come on now. You see, I think that's what he's saying here. I, I, I think we'll inherit heaven. Yes, I know that. 
And I believe we'll inherit a new heaven and a new earth, but I'm telling you that I think in all these beatitudes, there's a now principle. There's something not just futuristically speaking, there is something right now that we need to uh, 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 accept in our life, like in the first one, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom, not theirs will be the kingdom of heaven, theirs will be right now. They walk in the kingdom right now, poor in spirit, walk in the kingdom right now. So Psalms 37, 7, how many is tracking with me now? I'm, 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 my, my plane is about to, it's getting close. The, the pilot sees the runway, and so I'm getting close, and, 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 and I'm, I'm about to land here just a minute, but, uh, you know, um, it might be that the tower told me to, to circle the, 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 the landing, so I got to circle a little bit because I ain't done yet, so hang on. But we're close. We're in the vicinity of the landing. How many of you stay with me for the landing? Okay. Oh, this is good. So here we go. Psalms 37, 7. I want you to look up on the screen. It says, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Everybody say wait. Say rest. It says, do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Don't fret because of that guy. And don't you be that guy. Psalms 37, verse 8 says, cease from anger. And forsake wrath. Do not fret. It only causes what? Harm. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who wait on the Lord, they shall, here it is, what? Inherit the earth, dirt, dust. Psalms 37, 10. For yet a little while and the wicked shall be no more. Indeed, you will look carefully for his place, but it shall be no more. Verse 11, but the meek shall inherit the earth. We like that. But notice the last phrase, and shall delight themselves in what? The abundance of peace. Can I tell you what abundance means? It means more than enough. How many would like to have an abundance of peace? How many would like to have abundance of joy? Abundance of healing? Abundance of... Of, of, of his presence and whatever else you want to put in that phrase. Anyone here, you may say, you know, God, I just got too much peace. I don't need any more. No more peace, God. I'm overloaded with peace. I don't need any more peace. I, I don't think anybody of us would say that. But God says, if you will be meek, you'll inherit the earth. And you'll delight in the abundance of peace. This past week, I was one morning, I was praying and reading the word, and and I was kind of walking. I was walking in my office. I had the light off, and I had some music playing. And the Spirit of God was just, it was an incredible moment. And I heard three things. The first one was kind of the heading of the two things that came after. And I took it from me, I took it from my family, and it was also preparation. I didn't, you know, on what we would hear on Thursday, of, or, or this past week on Friday, I should say. But I heard the word forecast. How many know the Spirit of God still speaks? He wants to talk to you. If you'll just listen, he'll speak to you. And I heard the word forecast, and immediately I thought about a weatherman, if I recall, but sometimes, how many's found out the weatherman doesn't forecast too well? I mean, pretty good. It's a science, and they do pretty good. But sometimes, it it's just is doesn't work out. There's some vari- there's some variableness in that. Susan, would you come? There's some changing in that. But uh, I heard the word forecast. How many know when God says something, it, it will come to pass because He said it. After the word forecast, I heard one word next, and I'm going to spell it. I heard plenty, P-L-E-N-T-Y. Everybody say plenty. Plenty is abundance. Third thing I heard, God said, I will restore everything Satan has stolen from you. I mean, he's already claiming that word for you in the name of Jesus. 
I believe God is forecasting or prophesying to this church. You are going to walk in abundance and plenty. I'm not talking about this world things. I'm talking about as God's thinking. And everything Satan has stolen for you based on the book of Joel, chapter 2 and chapter 3, God says what the canker worm hath destroyed. Hath taken. God is going to restore everything. How many some things in your life you need God to bring some restoration to? Because it's been a pretty big mess. But God knows how to restore and bring plenty to your dust ground, your body. And God spoke that to me. Hallelujah, Jesus. So I'm telling you, this past several months that Satan has tried to destroy my wife, God's going to restore her in the name of Jesus. I believe that. Leon and Winnie, I believe it. God's going to restore life into your body. Perry, God's restoring you. Stephanie, God's restoring you. Everybody in this room, stand with me. God's restoring you. For that to happen, God says, in order for me to inherit the plant, inherit the earth, it comes from a life of meekness. Basically a life that says, not me, God, but you. I'm going to take me out of the way. Abundance is more than enough. You see, would you like to have more than enough peace? Meek people have it. Because I want to tell you, you don't have to fret. I want to tell you what meekness produces. No fretting, no worry. You, you want to know why? Because God's in control and a meek person understands that God is in control. So they don't have to fret. They don't have to worry. They don't have to uh, uh, be upset. Can I tell you what else? He also says here in Psalms 37, cease from being angry. Let me tell you something else. Meekness produces in you no more outburst of anger. You can stop being angry as a meek person. Why are you getting upset over everything? Why, why are you just, I just lost it. Why did you lose it? Well, it just made me so mad. Why don't you just back off in the name of Jesus? Don't get quiet on me now. You're shouting while ago when you heard about abundance. God said, if you'll stop being angry, you'll inherit the earth. We don't. The reason, we have, the reason we have outbursts of anger is because we don't believe God's in control. We need to control the situation, so therefore we get angry. But meekness says the Holy Spirit will take care of this. It's strength under control, and that you can trust God to take care of a situation. So instead of just outburst of anger, why are you cussing and doing all that? You don't need to do that. Oh, I'm talking to Christians. I'm not talking to the world. God gave you a better vocabulary than that kind of language. Come on now, in the name of Jesus. Oh, that, now, you either not shout now because you get under conviction or... Oh, come on. It's, and it's not just curse words. We just, we're guilty of just getting angry. Letting things control us instead of being controlled. It's not easy. How many, how many say this is for me today? Come on now. Meekness allows you to sleep. Meekness allows you to sleep in the bottom of the boat when you're in a storm because God's in control. Jesus, the Bible says about him, he was oppressed, he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before its shears is silent, so he opened not his mouth. He was beaten, he was tortured, but he didn't say a word. Like a lamb taken to be slaughtered, like a sheep being sheared, he took it all in silence because he was meek. But I'm telling you, it wasn't because he didn't have power. He could have called legions of angels back, thousands upon thousands. But he said, God, not my will, but your will be done. And because he was meek and lowly, generation after generation after generation, millions and millions and millions of people know who Jesus Christ is. See, it's not about us. Happy are the meek. For everyone exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Can I tell you this morning? Be God-molded, be Christ-shaped, and be Holy Spirit-dominated. And then you can say, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. I ain't got to do this in a while, but I'm going to do it. I'll stay away. I won't get too, I won't get too close. Matter of fact, 
Let me do what I ask everybody else to do. Hang on. Well, it's there. You know what's up here. Y'all okay? I'm okay. So, uh, okay, there we go. You want to be whole? Be meek. You want to get rid of the flesh longings? They're always there. You're not going to ever get rid of them. But if you, under the Spirit of God, that old man is destroyed, it is defeated in the name of Jesus. You choose to obey the Spirit of God. Meekness. I'm looking at some big guys in this room. Come on, guys, big. Give me some big guys that are meek, humbled before God. It says, God, I'm led by the Holy Spirit. Where are the ladies at? I was like, not today. And you're trying, oh, come on, I'm going to talk to you ladies too. And you're trying to control your situation. But if you let the Holy Ghost control your situation, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts, you'll control your flesh. Say one more time with me. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. I'm going to be the first one to lift my hand. How many needs to be helped with some meekness going on? I want to do some inheriting. Come on, can I pray for all of us? Father God, in the name of Jesus, we need help. But God, you didn't give, leave us powerless. You left us with the Holy Spirit to overcome every situation. Not in our pride, not in our ability, but in our availability to you, to trust you, and to overcome everything because we are controlled by the Spirit. We are being bridled by the Lord, by the Word of God, by the Spirit of God, by our Heavenly Father to walk in this direction. And when we do that, we're walking with an inheritance that we can have dominion over every step we take because we are under control. It is a controlled step by the Spirit of God. And no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I'm going to prophesy that to somebody in this room this morning. No weapon formed against you. It may, it may come up, but it's not going to prosper in the name of Jesus because you're walking in the Yes, in the flesh, but you're not walking of the flesh. You're walking of the Spirit of God. Mm. Come on, I, every hand that says, Pastor, I've been facing some weapons. Can I see your hand right now? Come on, lift it up. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Come on, there's hands going up. In the name of Jesus. I want you to look this way right now. I want, I want you to look this way. Keep your hand up. In the name of Jesus, you are made whole. You are victorious, not because of your ability, but because you are being controlled by the Spirit of God. And so you take the authority that God has given you. No weapon shall prosper. You speak the word. Come on, somebody. Speak the word. No weapon. No weapon. Health, body, be healed. In the name of Jesus. Okay, I'm going to just say something here. What is COVID compared to Jesus Christ? COVID is, is, ain't nothing but a thing, they used to say. Oh, I, now, please, 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 please understand. I understand the sickness. I understand that because my family has been inundated with me and my wife. I get that. I'm not saying it's nothing physically speaking, but I'm talking about for God. And I want to tell you very quickly, God is also, okay, I'm, I may cross the line here, but I'm going to tell you anyway. You don't like it? Well, go talk to Jesus. I believe we have to do, God has created all kinds of things for our lives. Has he not? I believe we ought to walk in wisdom. I got the vaccine two weeks ago. In three weeks, well, no, this past week. So that was made available. If you've seen what, my, what COVID will do to you, hey, you'll do anything you can. We take it seriously. But I believe in going to see the doctor, but I also believe in praying. Come on now. The gifts have been given to us. God has given doctors abilities. So 
I, I, I'm, just, I'm, I'm just telling you. I think it's a great thing. But my faith is not in the shot. My faith is in a shot of the Holy Ghost <laughs> and a walk with Him. I'm going to get both. And I'm going to see the health that God has given us. Amen? No weapon. So get the shot and pray. Glory to God. Isn't that good? Come on now. Get the shot and read the word. Pray. No weapon from against me shall prosper. Father, I thank you for every life that is in this room today. God, I receive this word for me, my wife, my family today that our family's healed in the name of Jesus. I receive it for Winnie Green. I receive it that she's healed in the name of Jesus. I receive it for every person in this room. And God, those that are even watching today that don't know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, I receive it for them that, God, I believe your Holy Spirit has touched them, has, has spoken, and is drawing them to you. And if you're watching me, here in this room or live today and you don't know Jesus Christ if you just simply say dear Jesus pray with me dear Jesus I ask you to come into my life forgive me of all my sins thank you for being my savior in Jesus name amen if you prayed that prayer meant that I believe without a doubt according to scripture you got saved I believe that there's a place down on the web page that you can click that said, I raised my hand for salvation. If you're watching on Facebook, tell somebody, say, I got saved today. Blessed are what? The meek, for they shall inherit the earth. So go out, get under control, start inheriting. It's yours. Amen? Be abundant. And take back what the devil has stolen from you. Have an incredible, awesome Jesus day. He loves you. Be in prayer. Easter's coming up. Good Friday next. Uh, 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 the Friday before for the communion. And next Sunday is, is a Palm Sunday. We got a great day planned. Have a great day. I'll see you soon.